So, you want to go to a metal festival, huh? Maybe you've seen videos of your favorite bands playing to crowds the size of medieval armies and dreamed of being there yourself. Perhaps you've heard stories from friends and people online about how insane the European metal festivals are. Maybe you saw a video of some depraved act that went viral. Or maybe you're a metalhead that through this very video is about to discover the world of European metal festivals for the very first time. In which case, allow me to expand your world and your welcome. To give you a quick rundown of what exactly a European metal festival is, it's a chaotic, exhausting, and fantastic place where for several days metalheads can be completely absorbed in the world of heavy metal. It's several days of non-stop live bands ranging from new artists of the underground to the legends of the genre and everyone in between. Most festivals are about three to four days long and can range anywhere from one to two days to even seven. Thousands of metalheads from all over the planet travel to these festivals to surround themselves with friends new and old and bask in the glory Story of heavy metal culture. It's a metallic paradise of live bands, headbanging, drinking, partying, mayhem, and just metal. Everything to have to do with metal. Metal merchandise, metal tattoos, metal games, metal bands, metal lounges, metal people, mosh pits. It is awesome. You get to see bands you've loved forever, discover new bands for the first time, and meet people from all over the world who love metal as much as you do. A metal festival isn't like going to any normal concert where you can just sit in the balcony for a couple hours and still make it to work in the morning with only a slight hangover. Most festivals have a campground where the majority of attendees stay in tents during the whole event, spending several days outside in the elements and being on their feet all day as they exhaust themselves with non-stop amazing concerts. Partying late into the night until they finally pass out out in their tents, only to wake up and do it again for the next couple of days. Metal festivals now exist in most parts of the world, so no matter where you are, you can probably find one a couple hours flight away from you. But the European metal festivals have long been regarded as the best, and metal fans around the world make it a yearly pilgrimage to travel to them. Whether it's Wacken in Germany, Hellfest in France, Resurrection Fest in Spain, Graspop in Belgium, Download in England, or any of the dozens of metal festivals out there, the experience is unlike any other, and in many ways the journey to get there is as much of the experience as the festival itself. Not only do you get to see so many awesome bands live, but you get to travel to a country you've never been to before, experience a different culture, and make friends in different parts of the world you never would have met otherwise. Traveling is the best way to expand your horizons, and why not do so while seeing the best metal bands in the world. Plus, these festivals are often in lesser-known towns that tourists don't usually visit. So by going to a festival, you'll often find yourself in unique places you never would have visited or known about otherwise. Metal festivals are an incredible time, but they're also not exactly easy in terms of planning, navigating, and surviving. For the unexperienced, the idea of being at one of these festivals sounds amazing, but the reality of what it takes to actually get yourself there might seem overwhelming. Or maybe you've just never had the chance to really look into it yourself. Well, you've stumbled onto the right video then, because I'm going to walk you through the entire process of what's involved in planning a trip to a European metal festival. Actually getting there, and what you can expect when you're on the ground with your horns in the air, not watching a YouTube video, but actually finally at a metal festival yourself. I'm what you may call a festival veteran, and have attended many of these insane festivals all over the world for over 10 years now. Everything from Vakken, Hellfest, Metal Days, Bloodstock, and so on. I've seen so many amazing performances at these festivals, and some of the most ridiculous partying imaginable. Many of the best times of my life happened at these, and attending festivals was and still is one of my favorite things in the world. Throughout the years, I've had people ask me questions about them. What are they really like? How to get there? Is it really that crazy? Does anyone speak English? Don't your feet hear from being at concerts for several days and walking everywhere? How long do bands play? Does everyone there hate Americans? Is going to Europe like the movie Hostel? I've been asked all of these questions around metal festivals, and I'm always happy to not only answer them, but to encourage and persuade people into going themselves. If you're a metalhead, these festivals are like walking into the halls of Valhalla. It's metal mecca, and it's something I think everyone should experience. And it probably will be the most fun you'll ever have in your life. But they're not easy, they can be stressful, exhausting, expensive, and there can be some genuinely shitty parts about traveling to a festival. As much as I love it, 
It's not the pure bliss of sunshine and loud music that promotional videos make out to be. They're tiring, they're hot, they're cold, they're dirty, and if you're a first timer, you might quickly find yourself overwhelmed. Luckily for you, I've made all the mistakes and learned from them so that you don't have to. Here I'm going to go over everything you need to know on what going to a metal festival is really like. This isn't to make them seem better or worse than they actually are, but to give you an honest idea of what you should expect from the journey. My hope is to leave you fully prepared to have the best time possible so that when you arrive, you're not slapped in the face with the hard truth of a fat shirtless European man crowd surfing on top of you while you're buried in mud, wondering why you spent hundreds of dollars on this experience. So you've got your battle jacket ready, you've already had some beers, and you're ready for a metal adventure to Europe. The first thing you're going to want to figure out is which festival are you going to? There's tons of festivals out there, and the best one for you can depend on a number of things. If you want to see as many bands as possible at the biggest festivals in the world, then you'll want something like Vakken or Hellfest. If you want something smaller and more underground, there's Brutal Assault and Alcatraz Festival. But the lineup isn't the only thing to consider. Maybe you have a group of friends that go to Bloodstock every year and you want to join them. Or if you're into hiking and want more of a vacation with bands playing, then Metal Days might be more for you. The attraction of a festival depends on lots of different factors, and it's just about figuring out which are most important to you. Are you more interested in how many bands you can see, or hanging out with friends, or going to a country that you like? I recommend going on festivals' websites to check out their lineups and joining forums on things like Facebook or Reddit to get more familiar before you just fly out to Europe. After you've figured out your festival, the next step is getting a ticket. Yes, unfortunately, these festivals cost money, and you can't just show up at the gate with a big smile and no ticket. And when planning your metal adventure, the ticket should be the first thing you buy. Tens of thousands of people attend these festivals and everyone wants tickets. So once they're on sale, they go fast. Most of the time, if you're not ready to go the moment they go online, you're going to miss out. The best thing to do is sign up for their mailing list. Pretty much all festivals should have one. And if they don't, then follow them on their social medias. Now remember, these festivals are in Europe, so tickets go on sale on European time. Being in California myself, I've definitely set alarms to wake up at 3 a.m. just to buy Hellfest tickets the moment they went on sale before. And sometimes I still missed out on them. If you're going to a smaller festival, like Metal Days or Brutal Assault, you might be more lucky and have a little bit more time, but in my experience, it's best to be on top of it. I mean, what's the point in planning this whole trip if you miss out on the ticket to get into the festival? So, you've got your festival picked and bought your ticket. Now it's time to figure out how exactly you're gonna get there. You may not have realized this, but these festivals probably aren't across the street from your house. If you don't live in Europe, you've got a pretty long flight ahead of you. For me, coming from Los Angeles, it's about a 13-hour flight to Europe. But then, once you land, you still have to get to the festival grounds, which are often in small villages and farm towns outside of the major cities. At this point in your journey, your main options are going to be taking a bus, renting a car, or taking a train. Many festivals have dedicated buses that leave from major city centers. You can usually find a link to them on the festival's website, and if that's an option, it's definitely the best way. The quality of the bus can vary. I've had some that were nice and fun, and I've had others that were absolutely miserable, but this option gives you the peace of mind of not having to navigate there yourself. Also, the European train train system can get you pretty much anywhere you want to go. It takes a lot more planning and figuring out train schedules and locations, but sometimes it can be your only option. Like when a bus company cancels your booking at the last minute and you have to scramble to find a train at 1am or you'll miss the festival. Anyway, the train system will probably seem intimidating to first time travelers, but just give yourself some time to go over it before you actually get there. It's not too difficult to figure out. Then as I said, you can always rent a car and drive to the festival, but then you gotta remember that you're driving in a different country with different rules and signs that are in different languages. So just be aware of that. So now you know how you're gonna get there. The next question is, where are you going to stay? Most fans stay in the festival's campground, and if I'm being honest, it's a big part of the whole experience. The campground at a metal festival is the craziest place in the world. Here the most drunk, debaucherous, hilarious things happen. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>
People party at all hours of the day here. Some people I don't think sleep at all. The campground is a great place to make new friends, learn new jokes and drinking games, and just hang out and have a good time being a metal savage. Camping at a festival is the best option since you're right there the whole time and are with all the other metalheads. If you're with friends, this is definitely the best option. But mind you that this does mean that you are camping in a tent with a sleeping bag on the ground and everything. And people can be pretty fucking loud and party real late. So you may not get the best sleep this way. To be honest, it's never bothered me, but if you're more sensitive to that, then there are hotels and Airbnbs nearby, where you can have a real bed and walls and a shower. Very nice perks to have indeed. The only problem is that you have to get yourself to and from the festival every day. Oftentimes there will be shuttles you can take for a small fee, but you are bound by their schedules, and I have missed bands before because the shuttles weren't running at the time. These are all things to keep in mind when deciding where you're gonna stay. If you choose a hotel, you'll have peace of mind knowing you'll get to clean off and sleep in a real bed every day, but you're missing a big part of the fun by missing the campground. If you camp, you're right in the action the whole time and you can go back to your tent as much as you want. But you're probably gonna end up looking like Leo at the end of the Revenant after the festival. And if you do camp, that means you're gonna have to bring a tent, a sleeping bag, and all of your supplies. And you'll have to set it all up and take it all down when you're finished. Getting a hotel means bringing far less supplies with you and traveling much easier, but goddamn, the campground is fun. Speaking of which, that leads me to my next topic, what to pack. Going to a festival in another country for a few days, you're gonna want to make sure you have the right supplies. Personally, I think it's best to pack as lightly as you can without missing anything important. That doesn't mean don't bring what you want to, but keep in mind that you'll be on your feet walking around a lot, and if you're camping, then anything you bring with you, you'll have to keep in your tent. But in terms of necessities, aside from your clothes and battle jacket, that part is mandatory, you'll definitely want to bring sunscreen, sunglasses, a hat or bandana, or cover of some kind for your head, a charging pack for your phone. I recommend a light jacket and if it's hot during the day just tie it around you because during the day it can be real hot but at night it can quickly get cold, so keep that in mind. Bring a schedule, either have it on your phone or on a piece of paper so you know what's happening. I personally always plan it ahead of time and write it down. You don't have to, a lot of people don't even bother with the schedule and just wander into whatever shows they do. That's fine too. Obviously bring your best metal t-shirts to show everyone how metal you are, and bring plenty of money for food and merch. If you're staying in a hotel, that's really all you'll need, but if you're camping then there's a lot more. You will need to bring a tent that you would either bring from home or try to buy in Europe somewhere, though I did try that once and it didn't work out so well. You'll need a sleeping bag and I strongly recommend an air mattress. Trust me, it will make a world of difference. You will want a lot of water. I always buy at least two of those massive gallon jugs of water to keep in my tent. I use one for drinking and one for bathing. You can bring as much beer as you want into the campground. That's how most people save money getting wasted there. Also get some type of food you can have in your tent that won't go bad so you can have some snacks. There usually are food places open all the time except maybe really late at night, but it's good to have something on standby just in case. You may not know this, but it gets dark as shit at night in the campground, so a flashlight is a good idea. Also, make it fun. Bring a speaker to play metal, bring some drinking games, or whatever you want to have a good time in the campground. Maybe the most important item to bring, whether you're camping or staying in a hotel, is good footwear. Festivals are often held in dirt fields that quickly turn to dust in the heat and mud in the rain. Not to mention you'll end up walking a few miles each day if you're running between stages, with thousands of people walking into you. So yeah, a good pair of boots is a good idea. It doesn't have to be crazy, but something that can get dirty and be stepped on without severing your feet would be good. So at this point, you know how to choose a festival, you know how to get there, where to stay, and what to bring. Your next question will probably be, well, what's it actually like when you get there? If you've seen videos from these festivals on YouTube, then you know how goddamn massive these crowds are. People often ask me if you can even see or hear anything, and aren't you just crushed in the massive crowd? Well, yes and no. The crowds really are that huge, but it honestly doesn't really feel like it when you're there. There. Not that it's small, it is very crowded, but it's not impossible to get around and to get a good spot to see bands. Since the fields at these festivals are so huge, there's usually space between people. I usually feel less crushed than I do at normal club shows. It takes a little bit of routing it out and walking over people at times, but despite the size of the crowd, I don't usually feel trapped anywhere. That said, it is a lot of people, and some people do better in crowds than others. Being at a festival, you're probably going to be outside most of the day, and that means you're going to be dealing with the sun, dirt, 
cold, and possibly rain. The sun is the main one to not look over, and if you're not prepared, you will have a bad time. That's why I strongly recommend a hat or some type of headwear. A bandana is a good idea, too, for when it gets dusty, you can put it over your mouth and use it as a mask. Because when people mosh in the dirt for hours on end in the sun, it can tend to get a little dirty. Festivals are exhausting. Whether you're going crazy, getting wasted, or moshing, or sitting in the back enjoying the show, it's a lot of walking involved. Festivals often have multiple stages that can be a decent walk away from each other, so it's important to prepare to be on your feet. Take breaks when you feel you need to, and give yourself extra time to get somewhere if it's a decent distance. Also remember to take time during breaks in your schedule to eat and check out some bands you've never heard of. One of the best aspects of metal festivals is just wandering around and seeing what you end up getting into. Without knowing it, you could stumble upon your new favorite band, or join a drunk group of belligerent heathens screaming obscenities to people in a language you don't speak. You might even find a fucking grave under someone's tent. The possibilities are limitless. Festivals are a lot of work to pull off, but they really are the best time you'll have in your life. There's no worry or stress about anything in the stupid normal world. Here it's just metal. Your biggest concern is what band are you going to watch next and should you get more beer. You get to see absolute legends playing back to back. Seriously, the main stages usually start within 10 minutes after the other ends, so it's never a dull time anywhere. You get to see bands you normally wouldn't and get to brag to all your friends. Plus, you'll make a shitload of new friends there because everyone is there for the love of metal and to have fun. I've I've rarely ever had a bad encounter with someone at a festival. I've never been in any fights or seen any, really. Not that they don't happen, but 99% of the time, people are cool and are there for the exact same reasons you are. And it's very easy to make friends by just going up to someone and saying, hey, I like your shirt, or nice tattoo, or fucking Slayer. Metal festivals are an amazing time, and no matter what, you're gonna have a blast. The travel to get there can take a lot out of you, and it's exhausting running around a field watching bands for several days, but it is an experience you'll never forget, and will probably want to do again. I have one more tip for this video, but it's an important important one, and that is when planning your trip, I strongly recommend giving yourself a day before and after the festival to just adjust. If you land after a 12-hour flight and go straight to the festival, you're going to be starting off absolutely wiped out and probably not feeling too good. On the other hand, if you go from the festival straight to the airport when it's over, you're then looking at being on about a 12-hour flight after you haven't slept or showered in days and have been drunk for 72 hours. I've done this before, and I'm telling you, it sucks. No matter how much of a bar barbarian you are, take my advice and book a hotel room nearby the day after the festival just to get clean, sleep, and eat decent food. Seriously, don't overlook this part, you will thank me so much for it. And well, that brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully now you have more of an understanding of how to actually attend these festivals and what it all really involves. It's an amazing experience that's given me some of the best moments of my life. I've seen my favorite bands play their biggest concerts at these events, and it's something every metalhead should experience. I've made lifelong friends friends at these festivals, but you will have a much better time if you're prepared and know what to expect, and hopefully I helped with that here. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments you'd like me to address I may have missed here, please tell me in comments below and I'll try to get to them. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching this. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you in the next video.